everybody, thanks for tuning in to Animal Adventures. My name is Kailin and this week we're going to explore backyard birds together. So if you have a backyard or if you have access to an outdoor space, this is a great way to get to know your local bird species. Um, before we get started, you are going to want a pair of binoculars if you have them, maybe a camera if you have access to a camera as well. If not, go ahead and just use a notebook to jot down the names and descriptions of the birds you come across. I'm also going to spend a little bit of time making some peanut butter pine cones. These are really fun to make. Um, maybe you've made them before and they're a great alternative to a bird feeder because they are much more natural. Um, they tend to get used up really quickly and they're biodegradable. You can just compost them really easily. If you do want to use a bird feeder in your yard to attract birds, uh, make sure that you clean those because they can be a hotbed for diseases that spread amongst birds. So you want to be sure to clean your bird feeder every single week. We recommend using 10 parts water, one part bleach, and doing that weekly. Um, if you do see birds coming to your feeder, that have red or crusty eyes, just go ahead and remove your bird feeder altogether and, and make sure that um, you don't put it back out until a good length of time has passed so you aren't spreading diseases amongst our wild populations. So let's go ahead and get started. We are going to see what we can spot today in the yard. Hopefully after a little bit of time and practice you are better able to both recognize them by sight and by sound, by what they, what they sound like in their different songs. Um, I find that the birds are usually out at about 9 o'clock in the morning, especially on sunny days. Um, and then I have a lot of success seeing a lot of species later in the afternoons as well, around 5 or 6. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, the first visitors we have are a pair of lesser goldfinches. These little guys are fairly common in the suburbs. They're a tiny, tiny little bird that feeds mainly on seeds, and they can be seen in flocks and in weedy fields. You can see here that they're pulling dandelion seeds from the pod. They're commonly seen on bird feeders too, so you might have some luck spotting them. Um, and this is what they sound like. This next cute little bird is a male black Phoebe, and you can tell from the slightly pointed head and the big white triangle on his stomach. Phoebes are flycatchers, so they like areas around water where there's lots of bugs, but I'm super happy this little guy visited my yard. This is what he sounds like. We also have a little Anna's hummingbird that has made our yard his territory. A fascinating fact about hummingbirds is that their legs are so small they can't walk or hop. They can only really scooch side to side on a branch. The males do an amazing courtship dive where they fly up really, really high in the air. And then when they dive downward in front of the females, they fan out their tail feathers and it makes a really sharp whistle sound in the air like this. Anna's hummingbirds have an unmistakable buzzing song that is easy to identify whenever you're around one of them. This is what it sounds like. This next bird is a cedar waxwing and they're really beautiful up close. However, the flock that comes by my house always sits really high up in this tree around 6 p.m. so it's hard to view them very well. Cedar waxwings are really big fruit eaters, more so than most other birds, but they also eat insects. They're easy to identify because they have a really high-pitched call that sounds like this. Here's a little dark-eyed junco that's one of a pair I usually see in my yard. These sparrows are commonly seen hopping around on the ground feeding on seeds. I really like these little birds and they have a distinctive call that sounds like this. Thanks for tuning in to Animal Adventures this week. I hope that you were successful in identifying several different bird species. And in regards to our pinecone bird feeders, I didn't have any birds scope them out, but I did have a couple of different types of animals visit them instead. So I'm not sure they're a good option for me moving forward. I'll be back next week with a brand new video.